What's going on everyone? Crypto Fiend here with Everything Crypto and for today's video we're going to be talking about a very important tool to use when trading cryptocurrencies. It's going to be none other than the MACD. In this video we're going to discuss what the MACD is, how to use it, and why it's beneficial to use while trading cryptocurrencies. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you to all you subscribers out there. We just recently hit 6,000 subscribers. I started this channel about three weeks ago with a goal to really start a cryptocurrency community, and I think it's safe to say we've started that community. Going into 2018, 2018 is going to be hands down the craziest year for cryptocurrencies, and I want you guys to join me on my cryptocurrency journey. So if you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing, but for today we're going to be talking about the MACD. Now first I want to talk about the technical side of the MACD, pretty much what it is, how it works, and then I'm going to simplify it into you know, simple terms, and then we're going to apply it to actual moving charts, as well as talk about how the MACD is beneficial and why you should use it when investing in cryptocurrencies. So I have this little picture here I'm going to use for reference, pretty much just to show you guys what's what and how everything works. So what is the MACD? The MACD is an ap acronym for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. This tool is used to identify moving averages that are indicating a new trend, whether it's bullish or bearish. So the MACD is used to determine new movement on the graph, and it determines if it's bullish or bearish movement. So bullish movement means that uh, the, the graph is moving up in the green, and bearish moves means that um, the graph is moving down in the red. So you have bullish here, and then you have bearish here. With the MACD, the MACD is going to have three numbers. The first number is going to be the faster moving average. The second number is going to be the slower moving average. And then the third number is going to be the difference between the faster and slower moving average. Now on most exchanges, they all seem to use the same three numbers. Those three numbers are going to be 12, 26 and 9. So I'm going to write these down on the screen for you guys. 12, pardon my handwriting, I'm not the best when it comes to writing uh, on computers. 12, 26 and 9. Okay, so the 12 is going to represent the faster moving average. So we're going to put an F there. The 26 is going to represent the slower moving average. And the 9 is going to represent the difference between the two numbers here the faster and the slower moving average. Uh, there's a common misconception when it comes to the lines on the MACD. The two lines down here that are drawn are not moving averages of the price, instead they're moving averages of the difference between two moving averages. So these two lines have nothing to do with the price, but they have something to do with the difference between the two moving averages. So the difference in width between the two moving averages. Um, for example, the faster moving average is the moving average of the difference between the 12 and 26 periods. So we are going to be, we are looking at um, for the faster moving average, which is this blue line right here. I'm going to put an F. Let me get a different color so it stands out a little bit. F. And for the slower moving average, that's the red line, slower. Okay. So for the faster moving average, that's going to be the difference between 12 and 26. For the slower moving average, it's going to plot the previous MACD line. So the slower moving average, which is this red line, is going to be plotting what this line was originally doing, and it will be doing it in a nine period moving average. So this slower line is going to be doing it in a nine period moving average while also following what the faster line was originally doing. Uh, so this means that we're taking the average of the last nine periods of the faster MACD line and plotting it at a slower moving average. This smoothens out the original line even more, which gives us a more accurate reading. So this is why we have a slower line in general. Why not just have the faster line? The reason we have the slower line is because it can trace over what the faster line was doing it in a nine period uh, difference 
and give a give us a much smoother and accurate reading so that's why there's two lines so the hist histogram down here this is simply plotting the difference between the fast and slow moving averages so this is plotting the width difference between the fast and slow moving averages um, if you look at the chart here you can see that the two the two lines are um, moving apart from each other they're getting wider this is called divergence this means they're diverging away from each other so let me get a uh, try blue I guess all right so these two lines are moving away from each other they're getting wider as you can see here down on the histogram the bars are getting wider so when the lines are separating away from each other the histogram is getting larger when the lines get closer together this is called convergence this means they're converging with each other they're uh, you know getting closer together and on the histogram here as you can see the lines are getting closer until they touch right here when they touch the histogram goes to nothing this e means the histogram is at zero in technical terms so that pretty much is the MACD summed up in technical terms of how everything works now uh, now we're gonna talk about how to trade on the MACD uh, because there's two moving averages with different speeds the faster one will obviously be quicker uh, to react to the price than the slower moving one when a new trend occurs occurs the fast line will react first and eventually cross over the line uh, when this crossover occurs and the fast line starts to diverge or move away from the slower line it often indicates a new trend so what this means is when this fast line the blue line the fast line is moving faster than the slow line obviously so it's going to be moving in front of the slower line so when this fast line crosses over this red line the blue line crosses over the red line this is creating what's called a crossover when this happens it's beginning a new trend so as you can see here on this line it's moving outward up and out and which is creating this wider space that's creating a new trend now this would be considered an uptrend when the blue the faster line is moving upward away from the red line and creating this large gap that's creating an uptrend now when the blue line is moving down across the red line and down like it is right here this is what's creating called creating a downtrend so that is pretty much going to be the MACD summed up. So let me sum it up again in simpler terms, of course. The MACD has three numbers. 12, 26, and 9 are the most commonly used numbers on many exchanges. So when you go on the exchange and go to the MACD, these numbers are already going to be put into uh, the MACD. So you don't have to worry about putting them in or anything like that. Also, when the two lines are wider from each other, that's going to create a wider histogram. When they're closer to each other, that's going to create a closer histogram. Now I want you to imagine a line right here. And obviously it's not going to be straight because I can't draw. But imagine a line going all the way down the middle. As you can see here, when this blue line crosses over the red line and goes up, the histogram flips to the positive side, as you can see here. And down here, this is negative. So you have negative and positive. So as this gets smaller, it's going to, when they get close enough where they can touch, that's going to create nothing. That's going to be equal to zero. And then, like I said before, when they cross and go up, that's going to create these positive histogram bars. As you can see, it's pretty much just tracking it. It's showing the depth of the width of the lines. So that is going to be the MACD pretty much summed up. Now I want to go over to Binance.com and show you guys how the MACD works on moving charts. This is LISC. So down here the MACD is already put in. This is on the advanced version of the Binance Exchange. So what you would want to do is you go up here to indicators and press on the MACD and then it will pull up right down here. What I was talking about earlier, how you can change the numbers. If you wanted to change the numbers, you could do it in right here. But I would just leave it the way it is because there's no reason to change the numbers and mess with them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at how the graph changes as the MACD changes. So let's start out right around here. 
So as you can see, the purple line is going to be the faster moving average. The yellow line is going to be the slower moving average. So as you can see here, as these two lines get wider apart from each other, well first off, up here, the purple line crosses the yellow line and begins to go down. That's creating a downtrend. So when these lines continue to go downward and get wider apart, that's creating a wider downtrend uh, and a strong downtrend at that. So if we look directly up from where they two cross, so if we pull this up and look directly up here, as you can see on the graph, the graph had a little dump. It had a little dump off. So that's a good example showing about showing what happens when two lines uh, begin to have a downtrend. If we look right over here, where these the purple line crosses the yellow line right here, if we look directly up, you can see the on the graph it begins to get into the green. Now it is not consistent green, but on the graph you can see that it's just enough green to be on the positive side and it's going to be small little bars because it's not you know wide and then as you can see here once the purple and yellow line get wider apart from each other the green uh, histogram bars get wide and if we look directly up we had this huge spike in price now if we look at the current price right now it looks like the purple line and yellow line are starting to get closer and closer together this could determine that we're about to have a crossover um, at the looks of it right now it's hard to determine if it's going to be a positive crossover as in going to the upside or if it's going to the downside and when it comes to trading cryptocurrencies and looking at the histogram a good way to look at it is that when the uh, when the histogram is in the red that is going to be meaning that the cryptocurrency is being sold at what it's not worth it's being undervalued when the cryptocurrency is being traded in the green that means the cryptocurrency is being oversold and it's overvalued if the cryptocurrency is trading about on the line like you can see right around here and like right here in the little red area and right over here that means the cryptocurrency is being traded at the perfect evaluation so um, when it comes to trading off, off the MACD for cryptocurrencies you're gonna want to buy in the red and why is this well you want to buy low and sell high so you buy in the red pretty much at the lowest part you can buy and then if you continue to watch this you can sometimes you can predict you know where it's gonna go you can predict if it's gonna go to the green but if you want to buy at a good value you're going to buy in the red if you're a day trader, the MACD is a great, great tool to use because you can literally sit here, see that the purple line is almost about to cross the yellow line, and this could begin an uptrend. And if that's happening, then you're going to want to buy right now in the red so you can have some in the green and then sell off in the green. So this is a great tool for you long-term holders to get in on a position at a good price as well as you day traders. So the benefits of this summed up is, like I was saying, it helps you really understand uh, how a cryptocurrency is moving when it comes to volume, really show you that if a cryptocurrency is undervalued or overvalued, to get in on a cryptocurrency at a good evaluation, as well as if you're a day trader, this is a great, great tool to use to help you get in on those prices that you want. So um, I'm going to go over and show you guys the basic version of the MACD on the Binance Exchange. That was the advanced version down here. But for the basic version, it's already pulled up on the exchange. So you don't have to worry about clicking on anything. It's already down here. And as you can see, they're using 12, 26, and 9. So it's the exact same thing. But the basic version does look a little more simpler. So if you like simple, go with the basic version. Uh, but it's the exact same chart. So let's look at one more just so we can uh, get a couple examples in there. What am I doing? Um, CND is up 115%. Wow. Uh, all these cryptocurrencies honestly just have been exploding lately. EOS is about to hit $12. Oh my God. Uh, it's crazy to think I remember two months ago when all these cryptocurrencies were $1, $2, and now they're 15 and even higher. Uh, okay, so... 
Eos, this is a good example. Now, Eos has been in the green all, for a long time lately. Um, but for the past day, Eos has really been in the green. As you can see here, Eos has kind of been trading. Uh, these two lines, the two lines on the MACD, have really been, tra been uh, tracing on top of each other. So as you can see on the chart, it's kind of been weird movement, up and down, up and down. But we finally got confirmation. We got this breakout right here where the purple got over the yellow and it began going upwards and that created this big uptrend. And then as you can see here, when the purple crossed the yellow, the purple began to slope down creating a downtrend and these two bars or these two lines got wider and wider apart. This created this sloping downtrend. And as you can see up here, if you go directly from down here, trace it upward, we had this downtrend. Uh, going on right now, it looks like good things for EOS. It looks like the purple line is uh, over the slower line, the faster lines over the slower line, and it's sloping upwards, which means we are going to be continuing to continuing an uptrend for EOS until you begin to see these lines get closer and closer together, cross it, having a crossover, which could determine either a downtrend or an uptrend. So um, that pretty much is the video for today, guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the description below. I will do my absolute best to answer them. Um, but yeah, the MACD is a great tool that you want to use when trading cryptocurrencies. It's simple. When you understand it, it's very easy to use and it all makes sense. So um, if you have any questions again, ask, please ask. Um, also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing for everything crypto related and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace!